So welcome to Central Athens. I thought today I'd have a walk round and show you a route that I think is ideal for tourists or perhaps people who aren't that familiar with Athens. If you want to walk around Athens, Central Athens, it's really easy. And you can see so many sites without getting on a bus or in a taxi. It's really pleasant. So if you fancy a mooch, you want to walk around Athens on a nice summer's afternoon, this is the video for you because I'm going to show you where to go, what you can see and how you do it. So I hope you enjoy. So here we are, we're starting in Syntagma Square, which is one of the central squares in Athens. And it's probably very best known for the fact that it has the parliament here. And the reason I'm starting here is, apart from the fact I think this is an ideal beginning, it's a transport hub for Athens. You have here the Syntagma metro station, which has metro lines two and three running to it. You also have numerous bus stops. For example, this one over here is perfect if you wish to get the open top bus. And I have an open top bus tour. So if, if you want to go further afield, if you want to go outside the very center of Athens and you want to see things which you can't see on this walking tour, I would suggest the open top bus tour. There's also a little train Aki here, or a little train, that again does a fantastic tour. So I would recommend as a tourist or as a, a new person in Athens, if you want to explore, Syntagma Square is a great central location to start. The square itself is quite interesting. Um, after the Greek War of Independence was settled at the Treaty of London in 1832, the newly established Greek government and King Otto, who was the king here at the time, decided that they were going to lay out a new Athens. And they laid out a number of streets and two squares, Syntagma Square here and Ammonia Square. And Syntagma Square is right on the boundary of the old walls, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So in 1833, the boundaries of Syntagma Square were laid out. They knocked down the old buildings, etc. And then in 1835, they started to construct this neoclassic building in front of us as a palace for King Otto. And hence the square itself here was originally called Palace Square. However, there was then an uprising in September 1843, a popular uprising with the military and the population of Athens, who were demanding a constitution because after the independence war, there was no constitution. And King Otto had to grant on the steps effectively here of the palace, a constitution. And they then changed the name of this square to Syntagma Square, which means in English, Constitution Square. And ever since then, this has been the center of democracy and protest in Athens. When you see protests in Athens, they are always on this square. It's amazing. And you can see Athens is a very cosmopolitan place. Very pleasant to be in. Here we are, it's April, the sun's shining. It's not hugely warm yet, but it's beautiful. So let's just go up and have a quick look at the palace, as it was. So as you can see, Syntagma Square is pretty big. And actually, it was originally laid out in 1833 after the Greek War of Independence was completed in 1832 by the Treaty of London, the Greek government at the time decided they needed to relay Athens. So they laid out really between here and the other end of the street in front of us, Ermu Street, a whole new layout for the city. And Syntagma and the other square, Ammonia Square, were planned at that time. Fantastic place to be here in April, lovely at the moment. You can see busy on a Saturday very busy and in front of us we have the neoclassical original royal palace so having laid out and established syntagma square or as it was known at the time palace square in 1833 they then started construction of this neoclassical palace for king otto a royal palace in 1835 and it was completed in 1846 but in 1934 its usage changed and it became the home of the Greek Parliament. So this is the Greek Parliament here in Athens, where all the MPs meet every day and argue like crazy. It also happens to have right here in the middle, probably just as significantly or even more significantly perhaps, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And you can see here the soldiers guarding it um, with deep respect. And every hour there is a changing of the guards, which is very popular here. Um, you can also see we have sort of paramilitary police guarding the parliament itself. And when there are protests in Athens, they always happen in Syntagma Square because of its history as the location of the Greek parliament and because of its name, Constitution Square, where 
the people rioted and demanded a constitution in the first place. So our little walk is going to take us from St. Agnes Square directly down Ermu Street, which is in front of us here, otherwise known as Hermes Street. Ermu in Greek is Hermes, so Hermes Street. But before we do that, I just want to show you a couple of other streets that you may be interested in walking down yourselves if you come here and you wish to. So as we leave the parliament and we come to the street on the right by the parliament, which is Queen Sophia Street of Vasilis Sophias, I would suggest you might want to consider walking up here. It's a bit of a walk, but there's a Britannic Gardens on the right. There are numerous embassies up on the left. And then about halfway up, you come to the Greek War Museum, which presents the history of Greek from a military perspective, and it is from a Greek perspective. And then if you keep going further, you come not only to the National Gallery, but also the internationally famous, traditionally called Hilton Hotel, which is currently under renovation. I'm not gonna walk further up here, but it is a very nice walk. And I would suggest that you do it if you have time. The Botanic Gardens are beautiful and cold, cold, beautiful and shaded in the summer. And the War Museum and the National Gallery are well worth visiting. But I'm gonna turn back round and go back down to St. Agnes Square. And if you wish to go to the amazing Greek Institute of Sciences and Ammonia Square, then you follow the road down to the right here, which is now being obscured by this lovely kiosk. So I apologize for that. But again, it's a perfectly reasonable walk. It's five, six, seven minutes walk down here on the right. You come to the Greek Institute of Sciences, a fabulous building, and hopefully I've put a shot or two of that in. And you can see here the open top buses, which tour around. I highly recommend them to pop on. One of my most popular videos actually is open top bus tour of Athens. So have a look at that if you get a chance. Now, the city of Athens, unsurprisingly, used to be surrounded by walls. And the wall actually ran down Queen Sophia Street, which we've just looked at, and then through these buildings, effectively, down this road here. And it was known as the Long Wall, because not only did it surround the centre of Athens here, it also then ran a couple of kilometres down to the port, providing access to the port when under siege. So again, walking down Syntagma with our backs to Sophia Street, Queen Sophia Street, we see here the Hotel Grand Britannia, which is certainly the most prestigious and expensive hotel in Athens. If you wish to stay there, it's probably 15, 1600 pounds a night for a basic room. And during the funeral of King Constantine, the last king of Greece who died recently, his family were staying there. As well. So having explored Syntagma at the start of our little walking tour, we now go down directly opposite the Greek parliament building or the old palace building onto Ermu Street. Ermu Street or Hermes Street is the main commercial street in Athens. And this is where you want to come to do your shopping, to do your eating. It's about a kilometre and a half long, and it's largely pedestrianised. It actually effectively splits into three parts. And we're not going to do the whole thing because walking down here a kilometre and a half would probably be a bit boring. But you can see on a Saturday morning in April, it's very busy with Greeks and with tourists. And this is the place that if you wish to do some shopping, you should come. But it's also a fantastic arterial link for us to go from Syntagma Square where we started down to Monasteraki, to Plaka and even to the Acropolis and we'll see all of that today on this little walk and it's a very easy walk. It's probably no more than three kilometres so I'm not going to suggest that it's hugely taxing and it's very easy to walk. You can take kids, you can take elderly people provided you can do three kilometres and you don't have to do it all in one go. You do it at a pace that suits you. There are numerous coffee shops and restaurants on the streets off Ermu Street. And Ermu Street itself was another street that was laid out in the new city plan of 1833. And it was laid out to link the city. So that's effectively what it does. And you can see loads of shops. It's the equivalent of Oxford Street. It's better than Oxford Street, I'll be honest. Oxford Street in London nowadays is pretty poor. I'll probably do a video on that at some point. This still has some serious commercial shops here. Um, and it's well worth just strolling down. And from Syntagma, of course, you're going downhill, which is a nice, easy walk. I would watch out a little bit for pickpockets and so on here, but Athens is like any other city, it happens. It's quite famous, I guess, around the Acropolis and so on. You just have to be a little bit careful. You can see there are certain characters who perhaps would take an opportunity, I'm not suggesting they would, but would take an opportunity if it's presented to So just be a little bit careful of your personal belongings when you are walking around. As we continue along, 
Ermu Street, after about 700 meters along Ermu Street, you come to the church of Panagia Katnikareos, which is one of the oldest Greek Orthodox churches here in Athens. And it's believed that it was built on the site of an old Greek temple, either to perhaps Athena or Demeter. And in fact, so many churches in Athens were built on previously pagan religious sites. I think it's right to call them pagan, certainly Greek traditional religious temples and so on. This church was thought to be built in about 1050, which would make it 20 years older than, for example, Windsor Castle in the United Kingdom, which is one of the oldest castles in the United Kingdom. And it's a fantastic church, I have to say. Um, the plan originally in 1833 was to demolish it because they wanted to put Ermu Street straight down through it, as you can see. But there was a protest here in Athens and King Ludwig of Germany made strong representation to King Otto and the church was spared and we can see it today as a result. So thank goodness for that because it would have been such a shame. And it's created this lovely little square in the middle of Ermu Street. Now at the church, if you want, you can turn left off Ermu Street and follow the road up there into effectively Placa, uh, just to the left of Monastiraki. And it's an easy walk up then to the Acropolis, which you can just glimpse at the top of the street there. But I would suggest rather than go that way, we continue for another 100 meters or so along Ermu Street and to Monastiraki itself. So we'll go and have a look there now. So as we come towards the end of the pedestrianization, you have a choice here about where you wish to walk. If you go straight on, you continue down Ermo Street, no longer pedestrianized, and right at the end here is something called Keramikos, which is the ancient Athenian cemetery of pre-Christian times, effectively. It's worth going down there and having a look. There are also a number of ruins down there from the first, second, third century BC. So well worth going down there. Alternatively, you can turn right. And if you turn right, this eventually goes up to Ammonia Square. And I would recommend visiting Ammonia Square, the second square that was planned in 1833 in the renovation of Athens after the revolution. But you can see it's a very vibrant restaurant and bar area. Great place to eat, but none of these places are cheap. They're not gonna get any cheaper, however, as we go. So if you're hungry and you get to this point, this is a good place to stop. We, however, are gonna do an about turn and we're going to go left effectively where it pedestrianizes and we're going to walk into Monastiraki and Monastiraki is really where the history of Athens begins and you can see on the hill beautiful view of the Parthenon and the Acropolis. As we come further down this street you're presented with an option you can either go straight on which would take you up to Hadrian's library or we can go right and we're going to go right because I just want to show you this really cosmopolitan area for, for lunch. Um, by Starbucks, so if you want to know exactly where we are and you're struggling on the map, just search Starbucks, ubiquitous as always, but you can see fantastic for lunch. And this is going to take us just along parallel to Ermu Street. Uh, this is pedestrianized, unlike Ermu Street at this point, and we're going to get to Monastiraki here. You could, of course, continue further down Ermu Street on the non-pedestrianized area and then turn left. But I think it's better to turn left at the point at which the pedestrianization ends, because then you experience this fantastic square, which is busy, really busy. In the summer, I hate to think what it's like. Uh, April, not even Easter weekend here in Greece, Orthodox Easter, a week later than Catholic Easter, Christian Easter. But you can see, well worth coming. And in front of us now, although it isn't much from this point, is Monastiraki Square and for me this is probably the best square in Athens bar none. So as we come out onto Monastiraki Square you can see we have a church, a Greek Orthodox Church to the right which I'll talk about in a minute. On the left we have an old Ottoman mosque which is now repurposed and in the distance we have ancient Athens and this is one of the iconic views I think of Athens itself and we're just going to have a walk around here but I just want to talk about the church and the mosque quickly first and why it's called Monastiraki. So on the left of Monastiraki Square we have the church of the Virgin Mary Pantanassa and this church is believed to be a 10th or 11th century church and originally Monastiraki Square was actually a convent and this church was within the convent and hence 
the name of the square itself, Monastiraki. Now, when the Ottomans came here, they knocked down the convent, opened up this big market square, and built in the middle this mosque, which was the mosque of Istarikis. Nowadays, I believe it's just a storage room or a conference center or something like that. But there is history packed in this square. You can imagine a convent, then a market square, then a, an area with a mosque, and now back to being an area with a Byzantine church. History in Spain, with on the hill behind us, the Parthenon and the Acropolis, and this fantastic shopping here. We'll go right in a minute into the Athens Monastiraki flea market, which then takes us up to the Agora. And we'll also then come back, it's the only time we loop back on this walk, and we'll go left up to Black. Monastiraki is obviously also one of the stops for the open top bus. Do have a look at my video of the open top bus tour. It takes you to areas that I'm not going to walk. And I would suggest actually combining this walk with the open top bus and using it as a hop on, hop off taxi to get around Athens. There is also here in Monastiraki Square the entrance to the Athens Metro, Monastiraki Station. And the Athens Metro is well worth using. It was only completed in 2004 for the Greek Olympics, the Athens Olympics. Although the station here itself opened in 1895 as an overground station. And when we go to the ancient Agora, you'll see trains running through it. They had problems building the station here because the ancient river of Athens used to flow past this square. And the ground apparently is very wet and very sodden as a result. But here we are, we're going to go into Monastiraki Market, another place where you have to watch your pockets a little bit. There's a bus, uh, the entrance to the sta train station here. And this is a great place to come and shop, but you need to bargain. The prices here in most shops are not fixed. So do bargain and you can see it. Really vibrant, really fun. Loads of shopping to be done. If you're a tourist here, you must come down into this flea market. And then I would suggest up to Placo. This flea market road is again taking us parallel to Ermine Street, um, down towards Kramikos, the ancient Athens Cemetery, which was located just outside the Athens walls, which looped around from Syntagma down the route I showed you and then down the back at the end here. But loads of shopping for you if you come here. Well worth it. You can spend a fortune here or you can buy a few trinkets. It's up to you. All sorts of shops here as well, from olives and t-shirts, which you expect through to cheap electronics and mobile phone cases, Comboli and Backgammon, two of the very traditional crafts here in, and games here in Athens. Football, of course, Olympiakos, that was my father-in-law's team, so I have to pay some reverence to Olympiakos. And like all these streets, you can go off to the sides if you want. I'm just showing you as we walk along here what you can expect should you come down here. And we keep walking and just on the right here as we get towards the end on a Saturday and at the weekend, there's a very nice flea market. I presume a Hindu, I'm not certain, I presume it's a Hindu in front of us. Either that or a very strange sense of fashion. But you can see a nice little flea market should you wish to explore some older Greek artifacts and furniture and objects, shall we say. Some of it tat, some of it probably not. I don't know what I'm looking for here, but I'm sure some of you do. Well worth knowing that this is here at the weekend, should you wish to come. Now, at the end of the flea market, there is the third, the ruins, I believe, of the third stoa, uh, which was something like first century BC. And at this point, you have a choice. You can either go left which will take you up to the ancient Agora, which is perfectly reasonable to do. Lots of restaurants up there. Or instead of going left, if you want, you can go right. And if you go right, we come down to this floral area here, and then we go left again, past the third stoa. The only reason I'm going down here is because I'm hungry, it's lunchtime, and I happen to know that there's a very nice, very, very traditional Greek restaurant down here, run by a highly religious guy, and I want to go and have lunch there. So I'm going to walk past the stoa, past the bookshops here. It's well worth exploring. And it's only adding a couple of hundred meters to the walk. So if you're enjoying yourself and enjoying the atmosphere, definitely come down here. So we keep on walking down. So continuing down, old record stores, DVDs as well, mainly records here. Lots of little cafes, very nice cafes. And just before we get to the end, we will turn left 
so we don't actually need to go onto the main road here. So we go left here and we're getting into some real character of Monastraki now, you can see. The traditional Greek graffiti, which is everywhere when they can get away with it, unfortunately. And it's this little restaurant on the right here. Uh, I'm not going to endorse anything, but I've eaten here a couple of times and I think it's fantastic and traditional. Ali Zoe, the good life, and I would highly recommend eating here. It's very, very, very nice. You can see busy today. There is a table, so I'm going to go and grab it. So, having had a very nice lunch, we now continue on our little walk. Um, leaving the good life, or Kali Zoe, behind. And we continue up here to the edge of the Agora, or the ancient Greek town at the foot of the Acropolis. Now then, to the right, there's another flea market. A weekend thing, not here during the week necessarily, but well worth investigating if you wish. But we are going to go left. And we're going to walk along the Agora here, the ancient Agora. And you can see lots of cafes here. Kiosk, should you wish to get something at reasonable value. And I'm not planning to go into the ancient Agora, but I will show you where you go into it. You can see Saturday afternoon, really busy here. Very, very nice. We're basically walking back down towards Monastraki parallel to the flea market that we came along in the first place. Okay. Loads of restaurants here. These are a bit more expensive than the one we just ate in. I'm here with Holly, my daughter. We had a single course each and a drink and it was 18 euros. And I would recommend it, but these places would be lovely as well. And I mentioned that the train here opened in 1895. You can see the train track down there. I hope you got a glimpse of the train going past. And the iconic views of Athens, really. So the entrance to the ancient Agora is here. You can see it's quite busy. You have to pay, it's 10 euros per adult, um, five euros per child, or I think there's a 30 euro ticket package per person, which allows you to go into various places in Athens. I haven't investigated it myself. Um, I would imagine in the summer it's going to be packed, but well worth going in, well worth going in seeing the ancient ruins of ancient Athens. So here you can see the train track going past, opened in 1895, but now part of the Athens metro. And the ancient Agora here, with these iconic views of Athens. Interestingly enough, everything we see here, the Acropolis and so on, was built from about 480 BC. Prior to that, in about 488 BC, Athens was completely destroyed by the Persian army. They'd defeated Leonidas and the Spartan 300 at Thermopylae in 490 BC. And then they came down from the north through Thebes and they left Thebes alone because Thebes had sided with the Persians. And they came down to Athens and they burnt Athens to the ground. And the Greeks then stood up and fought and beat the Persians, both at the Battle of Salamis, which was a naval battle, and also on land, but in particular the Battle of Salamis, and rebuilt Athens after this. And it was led by a gentleman called Pericles, who is really the father of Hellenic Greece. And they built all of this after that time. So everything you see here really is fifth century through to about first century BC. And we have a museum here, very beautifully kept museum. The Acropolis, to see how busy it narrows down here, very busy. So we're now at the back of Monastraki. Monastraki is to our left, Monastraki Square. And we're coming up to Emperor Hadrian's library. Now this was the largest building in Athens at the time, and the largest library in Greece. And it was built in the second century AD by Emperor Hadrian. And this brings us really to the next period of history in Greece. So the Romans came here and conquered Greece in 146 BC. And they loved Greece. Hadrian in particular loved Greece and was a huge builder in Athens and built this enormous library here. And you can see down here, Monastiraki, as I mentioned. And again, you have to pay to get in. Um, I'm not sure how much it is, but it's well worth exploring if you wish to. 
But we're going to walk up now through Placa, which is over there, the ancient city, up to the Acropolis, because I want to show you how to get up there so that should you wish to walk up there yourselves, and it's an easy walk, you can do so. So at Hadrian's Library, we turn right and we go up the hill here, and then we turn left and walk along past the old Roman ruins, which are 500 years more modern, shall we say, or less old than the Acropolis itself. So Monastiraki and the area surrounding Monastiraki, Placa, the Acropolis, etc., encompasses over two and a half thousand years of history from its destruction by the Persians to its rebuilding by Pericles, the Hellenic period that we're all familiar with, Aristotle, Socrates, Pythagoras, etc., into the Roman period, through the Greek Dark Ages, and then into the modern era. So we turn left and keep going up here. You can see a view of a Hadrian's library and the ruins here, very well worth exploring if you have the time. So we come to the end here, at the end of the road after Hadrian's library, you can see beautiful down here, but we turn right and we're very much in Placa now. Um, and you can see it's really nice, but I have to tell you, if you want to eat here, it's expensive. This area is probably the most expensive area in Athens to eat. Um, but then if you're coming here on holiday, why wouldn't you, to be really honest with you? So we continue, you can go left here, but we'll continue straight on and we'll go round to the right. So many churches and things. The history here is magnificent and I'm just brushing past it because I want to show you the, the end of my walk up to the Acropolis there. But you can spend a day doing this walk really leisurely, really slow, really easy, and you see so much, so much history. It just presents itself as you walk around corners. So here we have the Roman Agora, which is 500 years newer than the Greek Agora. Um, eight euros to get in, four euros for children. Walk past the Roman Agora, and then we go up the hill and from this point forward it is up hills but it's very easy and it's well worth it and then you don't need to rush it might be a little bit hot in the summer i suspect but it's worth coming up here so here we are the roman agora 500 years newer than the greek agora and set slightly apart from it but still looking pretty impressive i have to say after all these years and it doesn't actually at this stage matter which way you go. You can go left, you can go straight on. All you want to do is climb, you want to go up. And that's what we're doing because there is a walkway, a path, a pedestrianised path, which takes you all the way up to the Acropolis. Through Placa we go. The tourist season has definitely arrived in Athens. I came here in the winter and there was nothing here. Suddenly there's a restaurant by the ancient Agora. You can go straight on up. At some point you have to go left, so we're gonna go left here. You see the old buildings here. Family residences, which are no longer occupied, but the land's still held by the family, I would guess. So, end of the passage that we turn left onto, you can see, starting to climb. Stairs, so we're gonna go up the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, there's a green fence which wends its way up with a path all the way to the Parthenon. You don't have to do stairs. If you keep going left, you can use the path and it just takes you all the way around. The stairs, in this case, are simply a shortcut. Um, so if you have a push chair or a pram or, dare I say, a wheelchair, you don't have to do the stairs. You can work your way around. So here we are at the top of the stairs, at the top of the Agora with the Acropolis there and we just follow this path now. It's a gentle climb, it's not stiff at all. It's about six, seven hundred meters from here and you just follow this path. I last did this walk in September and at the time it was completely empty. There was no one here. Now it's packed, maybe because it's Easter holidays, I'm not sure, but the tourist season's definitely arrived in Greece and we get our first views over Athens from the top with the Agora below us. Tremendous, tremendous views. You can see just amazing, beautiful. 
modern meets old. So as we reach the top, and it's really not far, we have a choice. We can go left up to the Acropolis, or we can go right. And right takes you up onto this rock. Now, when I came here after my wedding, before my wedding, I think, I used to use these steps here. They are no longer allowed to, which is probably a good thing, because they're pretty slippery and dangerous. They've put in these steps here now. But it's worth climbing up because the view over Athens up here is fantastic. You have to be a little bit careful on these rocks because although you're not doing the stairs anymore, they are still quite slippery. And you can see, also quite popular with a hell of a view of the Acropolis. Much, much busier than when I last came here in September. Really interesting. <laughs> As you can see, the view over Athens is absolutely tremendous. But it's pretty busy up here today. It's not a hot day. Last time I came in September, it was pretty quiet. So this is a bit of a shock, to be honest. Hardly surprising now. And the queue up to the Acropolis. You have to queue to get into the Acropolis. And it's a bit of a climb up the steps, but you won't notice it. The olive trees and the olive groves around the Acropolis are considered sacred because Athena, after which Athens is named, the goddess Athena, gave an olive tree to the Athenians in return for naming the city and the Parthenon after her and, and dedicating them to her. And ever since, the olive trees around this area have been considered to descend from that olive tree that Athena gave to the Athenians and therefore are very sacred and have been since ancient times. Now you can see there's a bit of a queue to get in. I'm not going in today, but there's a museum shop here, of course. There's a Greek bank, should you need a cash machine, and a queue to get in. And it's 20 euros to get in per adult, 10 euros for a child, or as I said earlier, you can get a reduced all-encompassing ticket, which does, I think, Hadrian's Library, the Acropolis, and the Roman Agora, and the Greek Agora, for 30 euros per person, which may be your best bet if you're here to explore all the ruins. Big queue. So once we leave the Acropolis, assuming you've visited it and you've enjoyed it, we then, I suggest, you have two options. You either go back down the way we came to Monastraki, and you can continue your tour of Athens or get a taxi or a bus or whatever you're doing from there. Or you come down this path, which leads you to the taxis and the buses, including the hop on, hop off, open top bus, should you wish. Um, but beware that these places get very busy, obviously, with tourists. So it's not always easy to get a taxi from here or even on the bus, even if you paid for it. So as we walk to the bottom of the path, it opens out into this little piazza or square, platea in Greek, and you can see, as if by magic, there's the open top bus. Should you be using the hop on hop off bus? There are taxis here as well, the yellow taxis. And if you walk down here, you could go to the Acropolis Museum. Now I'm not going to go down here because for me, this is the end of my little walk, but I hope it's been really useful for you. I so I hope you've enjoyed this video. You've found this useful. If you're visiting Athens, it's a great way to see Athens. Combine it with the hop on hop off bus. I have a video on that, as I said, very popular. And I have other videos all over Southern Greece, particularly the Peloponnese and Athens. So if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. It really, really matters to me. It means a lot when you do. And write to me, I'll try and write back to every comment, at least I do at the moment. Um, and I hope you enjoy my other videos. Thank you very much for watching.